perfect day to stay in. Maybe do a project or two. I did a little refurb of my Condor Bushlore Mini the other day and posted it. And even though it's a gray sunlight, I figured I'd take it out of here and kind of show you. I just put one coat of um, some Minwax, um, a red mahogany stain on it. Wiped it down after 15 minutes. And uh, then I let that go for about eight hours or so. Just let it sit and dry. And then I took uh, some epoxy glue and poured it out on a paper plate and mixed it up and basically took a little piece of cotton cloth, a bit of a rag, nice and clean, and uh, put a layer of, uh, of that epoxy glue on there and put it on there as smooth as I can. I haven't sanded it since then, and I may not, but I put a nice kind of hard shell on there. It looks, I think, to be pretty good. And um, that was a great idea. Yeah. Linseed oil just wasn't working for me. I uh, kept rubbing off every time I put it back in my sheath. This is my EDC, and uh, which means I probably, honestly, won't use it all that often because uh, when I'm at work or if I'm at the store or the movies, <laughs> there's really no reason to use it except maybe to clean my nails, but it's, uh, you know, a just-in-caser, and, right? Uh, I was uh, perusing some channels the other day on YouTube, and uh, Sean over at House of Fire 72 showed a couple of videos of him redoing a, an old knife, and uh, he put, to harden the outside here, some epoxy glue. And uh, I asked him about it and I said, am I reading this right? You put, you actually put epoxy glue on there? And he said, yep, that's anyway, right. It yeah. worked great. Thanks, Sean, for that. But I got another little thing of Sean's that I want to show you. Go on his site if you haven't. It's like I said, it's uh, House of Fire 72. That's House of Fire 72, all one word. He's got these little stove rings that he makes and he sells. And uh, I really like them a lot. I mean, they seems to be really well made. Uh, it's called the uh, Blue Hill UL, assuming that means it stands for ultralight, 2. Meaning this isn't the first one he's made. This is a, like the second model. This is how it will go on your can. Okay, like a the, like the wood gas fire stoves, it's perfect for that. It kind of raises you up off the flame. Um, and I'll show you uh, how that could work here in just a minute, because uh, I'm doing this for a reason. So you've got uh, you know, holes here for flame to come through and for air to get in there. Same thing with these slots. And you see these little guys right here? You can customize it by bending these out and leaving them straight out so you can set on your can, or you can bend them in like a 45 degree angle, pull them out and bend them back down so they'll fit, or just pull them out a little bit so they'll fit snugly down over the rim of a can. Um, haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna do something so that I can have something to use this on. I've never made a wood stove before, and that is what I'm gonna do with these. This is a 29 ounce, I think they were pears, a can of pears, you know, because you got to have high fiber when you're my age. And this is basically, uh, I think it's a, yeah, 14 and a half ounce can of green beans. That's all it was. So I emptied those two things out and I went on YouTube and got some ideas for some, you know, what they call wood gas stoves or gasifier stoves and uh, that's what I'm going to make today and I'm going to show you how to make one and the sweet irony of all this is that <laughs> I've never made one before so it ought to be good huh so this is what we're going to do we're going to make some holes and some cuts and that sort of thing and uh, basically this can is going to wind up going in here okay but to flip this over, what I'm going to do, you see this black circle around here? I'm basically going to punch a hole in there and use tin snips to cut to there, to where that black circle is. And then kind of file it down a little bit. And then this can, after I make modifications on it, is going to squeeze down in there and fit right in that spot. 
and you can just leave it like that and let it sit there if it's nice and snug or you can take some JB Weld and uh, glue it in there and it'll stay. Uh, I see no reason to not JB Weld it but I'll only do that if it doesn't seem to be quite as tight as I want. Okay, so if you can imagine this being cut out and this can being down inside here, this being where you're going to put the fuel in, meaning you know wood chips, that kind of thing, sticks. And then once you get your flame going, or even before you get it going, you take your can, this uh, the uh, Blue Hill UL2, and you can kind of see how it's it's not flimsy, but it's soft enough so you can you use it in whatever diameter really that you want. And because this is a wider diameter, I can put this right on there like that. Okay, now, right here, if you're going to be cooking a pot on here, which I don't actually have a pot to show you, but maybe this will sit on there. Okay, so if I was cooking a can of soup like this, this uh, piece right here where the uh, Blue Hill UL2 opens up, you can feed your sticks down inside there to keep it burning. Uh, you see a lot of stoves that have an, like an opening in here, and I really like those. But you don't need it on this because this is raised up, and you just drop them down in there. So, uh, really intrigued with this. I'm glad I have one. But like I say, go on Sean's channel on YouTube, House of Fire 72, and look for a video called "Introducing the Blue Hill UL2." And that will show you this, and it will give you prices and tell you how to get one. Uh, it's worth it. He's got a great channel if you haven't been on there, so please indulge. Okay? All right, I'll be back. All right, the first thing you want to do, after you open the can here, clean it out, take that label off, is that you want to cut out a ring right about here. And as you can see... That can just fits right down into these grooves here. Moves around a little bit. It's just a tad off, but it's enough for you to at least mark your circle there. And it doesn't have to be real accurate as long as you, you know, snip it to the inside of where your black circle is. You can always adjust it by using your file to kind of push it down, uh, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to use my tin snips here. That's a pretty good start there. Drilling some holes in there in the bottom of this can. It's open on that side uh, in a crossing pattern. I would guess, and I am guessing, maybe 20 smaller holes in there. And basically so that when you put your fuel inside here, when it burns down to ash, it can drop out that way and it'll drop out of the bottom of the can. But this is, I'm going to kind of use the file to push these edges down and so that'll fit in there a little bit better. So let's do that. Uh, get that situated so we know that that bottom can go in and then we'll uh, press on, okay? you can see that I'm not actually filing this down like to make it nice and smooth what I'm doing is basically pushing the excess material down so that when the can goes down in there this can 
you get it down in there, it'll fit in there just right and it'll kind of hold them in place. So we did a pretty good job there, but yeah, we got a little ways to go still. So let me finish that up and then I'll show you, okay? On the opposite end, the end that you open first, now what you want to do is you want to drill some pilot holes. We're going to do two rows, going starting from about maybe about three-eighths of an inch or so from the lip, just to, for pilot holes. And then uh, I'm going to open them up. This is a quarter inch bit. I want to open them up a little more. This is going to be the top, okay? So this is where the air is going to flow in from the bottom. Let's get the old trusty and very old drill out here. Go on the opposite side. I know you can't see. All right, I went ahead and finished all those pilot holes, and you can see they're offset from each other. Okay, 10 holes in each row, so 20 holes, ought to be plenty. So now, we're gonna see if I can widen them out a little bit. So this is a quarter inch bit. To uh, prevent failure on the first burn, thinking about the size of the holes, I mean, we're supposed to have two rows of 3 8 inch holes. A uh, quarter inch is not a ton smaller, but it's smaller enough that I decided I'm going to go ahead and put another row of 10. And uh, so hopefully that'll be plenty. Um, but I've seen much bigger holes, and that's kind of. Uh, you know, in all the videos that I've seen, I've seen much bigger, bigger holes. Um, so we'll see how this works. Like I said earlier, it's my very first one. And I never wanted to really follow all the directions. And a lot of that has to do with uh, really not having the tools to do. That what I can is uh, pretty much done. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get a smaller bit and we're going to drill a series of... Uh, holes in the bottom of this can so that the ashes will fall through. Okay, this is the bottom of the green bean can and we're going to drill a series of holes so that the ash can fall through and we're using a 3 16 drill bit and that's what the instructions call for. So finally I've got a drill bit that's the right size. Alright, that's for the bottom of the can. So all the ash can fall through. You don't have to put these in here. Um, but I also think that, especially at the beginning, it's going to lend air to the fire. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill just like I did in the bottom of this. I'm not going to go three rows, but I'm going to put two rows. I'm going to drill the pilot holes, and uh, then I'm going to take that uh, quarter inch, drill them out a little bit bigger.
is the last of the drilling. This is a 3 16 bit. And what we're going to do is about between where this lip starts and when this corrugation starts, we're going to put some evenly spaced, as much as you can, holes around. Just one row. That's all you're going to do. So I'm going to try to get 10 in there. The spacing might be a little bit weird, but, uh, but that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Alright, just uh, for the sake of keeping these things as evenly spaced as I can, these top holes here, I put, wound up putting 12. So just make there. sure that, um, and I don't have to tell you guys, but make sure that you use your file on these holes. I've never cut myself when I've been working with metal, but I don't do it very okay, much either. So, let's see if we can get this in here. Basically, there's your stove. Not bad, huh? I like it. I built this actually for two reasons. I've never built one of these before. I've been wanting to. I've been thinking about it. Um, but I have stoves, and so I really wasn't all that motivated. But uh, talking to Sean over at House of Fire 72 YouTube channel, uh, and when he was talking about his uh, Blue Hill UL2s, well, that's what this is. And this, let me stretch around just a little. And pinch her in. And there you go. Yeah. I'm real happy with that. So, so what do you think? I'd say uh, we need to do a burn test. See if it actually flame, and then of course a boil test afterwards. But uh, I think that's for another day, so you're gonna have to stay tuned and watch part two.